Springs are an important topic in physics. We use springs frequently in machines, and there are lots of physical systems that behave like springs, such as the bonds between atoms, vibrations, and even earthquakes. In physics, a spring is anything that obeys the simple rule that displacing an object from equilibrium creates a force that pulls the object back to equilibrium. We calculate this force using three factors. First, there's a negative sign, indicating that the spring force always pulls the object back to equilibrium. If you leave off this negative sign, the universe will explode. Second, there's a constant called the spring stiffness. This number refers to how much the material of the spring allows the object to stretch. A high spring stiffness indicates a very strong spring, like a shock absorber, while a low spring stiffness indicates a very weak spring, like a grocery store scale. Finally, there's the distance the object has traveled from its equilibrium location. You can think of this distance as the amount that the spring has stretched or compressed by. A common experiment in physics involves hanging a block from a spring and watching it oscillate. In this experiment, the block experiences two forces, the spring force that could point upward or downward depending on where the block is, and the force of gravity from the Earth, which always points downward. The fact that the spring force always points opposite of the block's distance from equilibrium creates an interesting feedback loop. If we lift up the spring, gravity and the spring force pull the block back downward toward equilibrium. As the block accelerates downward, its speed increases while the force from the spring decreases. Because the block has picked up speed, it passes through equilibrium and begins to experience an upward force from the spring. Eventually, the upward force on the spring wins out over gravity and the block turns around and begins to accelerate upward. After shooting past equilibrium, the loop repeats. We can model this feedback loop with this computer code. We start with four important variables, the stiffness of the spring, the unstretched length of the spring, the mass of the block attached to the spring, and the strength of the gravitational field. Then we create the visuals for our code's animation, the block and the spring. Here we attach an arrow to the block that will indicate the total amount of force acting on the block. Then we enter something called a while loop. This while loop will repeat all of the indented lines. First, we set a rate for our animation. If the code runs too quickly or too slowly for you, try changing the rate value. Next, we calculate the distance that the spring has stretched by. This stretch is equal to the difference between the spring's natural length and the spring's current length. The force that the spring exerts is given by the equation we saw earlier, a negative sign times the spring stiffness times the stretch of the spring. We subtract from this spring force the constant force of gravity on the block. Sometimes these forces will point in the same direction, and sometimes they'll point in opposite directions. Next, we multiply this force by a small amount of time and divide by the block's mass. Based on Newton's second law, this combination tells us how much the block's velocity changes by, so we add this number to the block's vertical velocity. Sometimes this addition will cause the block to speed up, and sometimes it will slow down. Lastly, we calculate the distance that the block will move by in this same small amount of time using the equation distance equals velocity times time and add this distance to the block's position. Sometimes this addition will move the block upwards and sometimes it will move the block downwards. Running the code, we see the exact same type of animation that we saw in our experiment. When the block is too high, gravity and the spring pull the block back downward, causing it to accelerate and shoot past equilibrium. When the block is too low, the spring overcomes gravity and pushes the block back upwards, again shooting past equilibrium. If we change the stiffness of the spring or the mass of the block, we can watch the spring oscillate with a different frequency. If you conduct this experiment in class, you can adjust these variables to match the frequency of your spring. You have now learned how to animate the motion of an object experiencing a spring force. Follow the link in the description below to complete a set of activities that will help you learn more about this important force.